Okay, let's have a look at another custom uh, Subedio 5 aside squad that I've uh, painted. Uh, this time we're looking at the Watford Werewolves. These clubs do not exist. Uh, that's why this is a fantasy league. We've already looked at the uh, Fulham Firebirds. And so let's just uh, jump into this. Uh, the color scheme is gray and black. More darker colors there. Well, the, the, the granite gray turned out to be a, a very, very light gray. And that concerned me that it would look uh, not gray enough until I put the uh, clear gloss coat on here, at which point it started to pop. And you can tell the, the difference between the gray and the white on the, the base down there. The yellow oval there, the yellow sphere, that's supposed to be a full moon. And that's the werewolves uh, emblem, their logo. Uh, and uh, I think that looks fine. Uh, this is it was never going to be, uh, I was never going to put the uh, little uh, sleeve and um, shin guard details on this one. This, was, uh, this design was uh, sort of preordained. There's the uh, decal there. That is a custom Baltimore Ravens away team uh, shoulder number. Fit just great on this. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way these turned out. I wasn't until I put the clear gloss uh, Tamea coat on. I thought, well, maybe this isn't up to my normal standards, but no, it's fine. And, uh, again, we're dealing with a two and a half centimeter tall uh, figurine here. So that's a, actually quite remarkable. Uh, my benchmark is always going to be, does this look as good as a hand-painted Subedio figurine from the uh, 60s or 70s? And uh, the answer here is, yep, yeah, looks fine. Okay. No stripes, no intricate details. That's never going to happen uh, with these. Uh, I just don't have the proper brushes and tools for that. Uh, but for my purposes, a custom uh, five-a-side squad for a, a, a league of teams to play on my forthcoming uh, indoor arena uh, pitch, this is just fine. And I'm also mindful of trying to uh, distinguish each squad from each other. And I'll explain what I mean by that as we look at the next figure. I'm not going to be doing any away team kits or any third kits. You know, the, the, each squad is going to have one kit. So this is going to be the, um, uh, the werewolves kit for this league. You know, a light gray top, black shorts, light gray shin guards, and black shoes. They're all going to have black shoes, by the way. Um, it would be much easier just to give them all white shoes and not even have to paint them on that white base, but the convention does seem to be in Subutio uh, to give them black shoes. So that's what we'll do. And, uh, yep. Looks perfectly fine. I think I did a little better job of trying to make that s spherical, that full moon. Uh, probably should have used a different color yellow. Perhaps that flame yellow I used on the Firebirds goalkeeper um, and gloves might have been a better match for a full moon, but folks, this is fine. Um, I'm going to know instantly by looking at this figure that this is one of the Watford werewolves, and that's what's important to me at this stage. Um, you know, with my electric football squads, some of my teams match so closely their uniforms that I can't tell them apart when they're on the game board. Example, my home team Cleveland Browns and my home team Cincinnati Bengals. Now, at close inspection, you can certainly tell them apart, but it takes a close inspection. Uh, from this far, no chance. Okay. Number 12. That decal's okay. I'm not too worried about them going on slightly askew because, you know, they're wearing shirts with wrinkles in them. These super footy figures have wrinkles and textures on the figures. Especially the keeper, and we'll talk about that here in just a few moments. But no, this looks great. Looks just fine. And just to remember, folks, uh, <laughs> this is what it looked like before. And so, uh, you know, start to finish. I had to... Uh, use a new paintbrush on the keeper though because my the paintbrush I was using just wore out while I was uh, painting these gentlemen 
course, in electric football, the, the pros would then create little name plates to put above the numbers there. And uh, I suppose I could take some tiny uh, shoulder decal, Tudor shoulder, shoulder number decals and put them on the shorts. I'm not going to fool with that. I wouldn't be able to see those anyway, folks. This The decals for me are strictly for identification purposes uh, rather than aesthetics or um, uh, realism. Okay, and these are water slide decals. You can see a board around them. They're not pre-cut, you see. I just cut them out of the, of the, of the pages. So, And these were custom, thanks to El Toro 4.3. These were all extras that he sent me. So this is perfect for something like this. All right. Okay. I'm pausing this because it reminds me of Chris Kamar who has uh, just announced he's uh, leaving Sky Sports. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can't see his face as well as I can, but, well. And these moons, these full moons, were never going to be perfectly circular. Um, I'm just not that skilled, folks. And I decided to see what it looked like giving one of these guys blonde hair. I'm fine with it. It's gold and yellow. King's gold, actually. King's gold in, in uh, apple barrel paints. Uh, it's a different color yellow than the uh, sun, which I think is just... Or the uh, moon, which I think is just yellow. I think it's just... Maybe it's bright yellow. Um, he's number 31. And yes, it's fine to have a number 31 in... In soccer, I wasn't aware of that. I, for uh, for years, I thought it only went up to about twenty five. But no, you can have any number you want between one and ninety nine in soccer, as long as no one else on the team has that number. Okay. Now, when I was painting this with the granite gray, it, it just still looked like plain white apple barrel paint, and it wasn't until I put the gloss coat on that it finally began to look gray rather than white. So, but that's fine. I mean, this will be distinguishable from the uh, Accrington Archangels whenever I paint those, which will have a white top and white shorts and white shin guards. And I have to put some silver or gold highlights somewhere on the on the kit. But that's a long way off. That one's not priority. Um, again, I'm only doing one kit per squad for this. So they're going to have to be distinguishable from each other when... There are any combination of, of teams are on the field, which is why, you know, I'm sort of planning these ahead. Now we'll look at the keeper. And as before, it's perfectly normal for the keeper's uh, kit to look completely out of sync with all the others. But he does, you may not be able to see it, he does have the full moon on his kit there. Uh, we're looking at a lime, limeade apple barrel paint color there with black gloves and black shoes. And again... This one looks pretty good. I'm probably going to take them out of this stick, though, so you can... No, there we go. I don't know if I can focus him. Now, that decal was a little fiddly to put on. And uh, it's on there. And I'll, I'll go through my process again on how I put those on there. Uh, I'm also a little concerned. Again, this keeper doesn't seem to fit properly in a Subutio uh, rod. Uh, it's just too big. Uh, I'd have noticed that... These keepers are a little bigger than the uh, other figurines. Not too much. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but... Um, that's only one coat of the Limeade color. It only needed one coat. I think it looks quite nice. Nice contrast with the wrinkles and stuff. But this is, uh, you know, this is actually a pretty normal color to see on a goalie. At least in Premier League squads. All right. Now, getting back to this decal, each of these super footy goalkeepers have a circle on their back, a textured circle. It must have something to do with the the, the mold sprues or something. Uh, but they're textured and, you know, that's right where a decal or a numbers should go. And I'm sure it works perfectly fine for those little circular stickers you can get to put on. They're really expensive that you can get to put on Subidio uh, figurines. Can't get them to focus. There we go. 
but I'll show you what I mean and probably won't be able to uh, see it on film here or on camera uh, here's one might have to turn the uh, light off we'll do so now you can see that divot that circle that yeah, it's a hole, basically, in the back, and that's what the decal has to go over, and it's really hard to get the, the decal to it, you know, to, to adhere to that contour. Uh, but, let me uh, go ahead and turn this light back on. I'll take you through my decal application process. We'll use this one as an example. Now, we've talked about this before. I use the exact same method as with the electric football figurine. Um, so of course you put the decal, I use a sponge, I just wet a sponge and, and cut the decal out and just set it on top of the sponge so that the paper underneath can become saturated with water, which will cause the decal to come loose, okay, with tweezers, I use fine tweezers for it. While that's going on, I'm getting out some of my Mod Podge, a little cup of water, dipping my brush into the water, then dipping the brush into the Mod Podge, then dipping the brush back into the water to water the Mod Podge down, wiping off just a little of the excess glue out of the uh, brush, and then just dabbing where it's going to go on the figure. That creates a puddle of water mingled with Mod Podge glue. And then I'll uh, have a paper towel nearby. I'll just uh, wipe the brush out to get you know the excess water and or glue out of the brush. Then I'll simply take the bristles of the brush and touch this little puddle of water on top of the figure there, it sucks the water up, but it leaves the glue residue behind, okay? At which point, then I use the tweezers to get the decals off the paper backing. We put them on there. You have several minutes to, to get them where you want them with the tweezers and, and or your fingers and or brush. Uh, your mileage may vary with that. You, you might imagine these decals are very, very, very easy to lose. I you know, but um, uh, then I let the thing dry for, uh, I do it an hour, it probably doesn't even need to be that long, and then I'll do the same thing again, water down Mod Podge, right on top of the decal and all around it, dry out the brush just a little, touch the brush to this pool of water and glue, <laughs> suck out all the water, it leaves glue residue behind, hopefully also around the edges of the decal. So it's on there. And of course the decal itself is adhesive when it's wet. So that's, you know, sort of redundant backup contingencies. I don't want these things to fall off. And they still might, you know. This is a very kinetic game I'm going to be playing with these. Uh, it could be very easy not just to chip the paint off these things and frankly not to knock their arms and their hands and break their ankles and stuff. Although these are extremely tough figurines, these super footies. But, I mean, you can knock the decals off these things too, but... Again, for me, these decals are simply so that I can look at the figures and say, okay, that's number 31. And since there's only five guys on a team here, uh, very, very small lists of rosters rather than in football. And, you know, I was having up to 50 or 60 people on the, on the teams now, or, at, you know, 11 at least for the EFHL League. Now you're only dealing with five aside. So uh, anyway, that's my process for... Uh, uh, decal application. There's no way for me to demonstrate that. I, I don't have a camera set up uh, to, to to really uh, show you how I do that and keep everything in focus. But there you go, the Watford Werewolves. So now we have two teams in our five-a-side league. I think the next team we're going to do might be the Huddersfield Hydras, which I'm going to make those... That's going to be a blue team with red highlights. It's what the, the kit's going to look like. In fact, I can show you the colors here. Um, probably uh, two blue and flag red. And there's not going to be a whole lot of red. Maybe stripe down the shorts, or at least down the shirt, the, the, the sleeves, from the neck to the uh, uh, biceps on the sleeves, maybe. And uh, try to use some of these custom decals. It's a, obviously an NFL team. Uh, any guesses before I reveal who it is? Uh, okay. Buffalo Bills. And uh, the biggest pill with this is, is cutting these out and trying to get as, as little of the border around 
these as possible. See, again, these are custom decals. Uh, you have to have a very special, expensive printer that will print white ink in order to not have that color border around your decal. So, you know, this should match the paint. Let's see if I'm right. The one in the middle, that blue in the middle. I think it's going to be close enough. And certainly doesn't match that, and it doesn't match the uh, Admiral Blue. So two blue is the way to go here. And uh, so I think we'll be all right there. This is my new palette uh, that I'm using. Uh, I've got more palettes in reserve when I need them. Uh, sometimes you can see I actually put a little drop of each hue of a color I have in the palette to see which one might match. That's what I did here. Did the same thing with the red. The flag red and the bright red are hardly distinguishable there, so... And, of course, the two different color oranges, the jack-o'-lantern and the pumpkin orange, also hardly indistinguishable. But this is kind of how I roll. I don't put a lot of paint out into the palette because if you don't use it all, it's wasted. That's how I, that's how I roll with this stuff. Well, folks, uh, thanks for watching. Today is a Saturday. Oh, and before we, uh, before we sign off here, my uh, uh, Subutio pitch has been shipped. Uh, it... Finally, I mean, it, it took some doing to get the thing shipped, uh, and we'll talk about that later down the road. I think it's actually stateside. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to stress over uh, saying that and be like, oh, great, now I've jinxed it. Now it'll, it will arrive broken. Hey, it's completely in the hands of the carriers at this point, no matter what I say or don't say. So uh, it, I'm, I'm looking forward to I've been looking forward to, to the thing for over a year, right? Because I've been trying to buy something that will fit on this table to place a video on. Um, it's going to be the playing surface 60 centimeters by 40 centimeters. That's roughly two feet uh, by one foot. And you might not think that's, a, that's too much, but it is five aside. And I, it's only slightly slaw, smaller than that uh, total action football uh, game I tried to use, which was an unmitigated disaster for Subutio. But um, it'll be here soon, and I can finally uh, discover what it's actually like to play Subutio as intended. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care, folks.